<laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no, you can't have that. No, let go. Let go. Right, I'm going to miss you too. Yeah, right, no, let go of that. Let go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I know. I know. Okay, yeah. All right, anyway, Betty. I'm going to miss you both. I'm going to miss you both. I'm going to miss you both. Yes, I am. Come here, please. Come here, little guys. Hello and welcome to Azerbaijan uh, and Baku. Um, been a busy week this week. Yesterday in Monaco, today in Azerbaijan. Brief stop at home uh, in between to see the family and uh, and the puppies, of course, the dog. Uh, puppy's doing absolutely fine. The two dogs are getting on absolutely brilliantly. Uh, hard work because he's still weeing all over the house. But anyway, that's to be expected. Um, so that's all good. Uh, family's all great, even though it was a brief uh, visit for me, unfortunately, for these couple of days. Um, but here we are, at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Um, I quite like this one. It's, um, I actually didn't do it last year, but I was here for the first year. It's a really interesting place. What you just saw out of the window just there, um, that view that you could see was not the, the track. So that was to sort of to the left of the track uh, as the view goes out of our window. Um, to the right, just over here, I mean, literally just down outside of our window, and I'll show it to you tomorrow in the daylight, um, is the track. So all the hotels um, and, and the centre of the hub of where everybody stays is literally on the circuit, overlooking the circuit, overlooking the paddock. We walk to work here, so a really easy one from that perspective, uh, although I'll probably be skateboarding to work, I should imagine. Um, but it's, uh, everything happens right in the center. And the races that, that are like this, all the races that are in city centers tend to be the ones that most people within Formula One like most. Uh, people always ask me, what's your favorite Grand Prix? What's the favorite place you go? It's always the ones that are, are in or near a city center, like uh, you know Melbourne, uh, like um, Montreal. Uh, Singapore is a great one. You know, Monaco is obviously a lot of fun. And here, uh, you know, has become one of those races. So, uh, interesting place, uh, very different kind of culture, which I love to experience as well, so that's great. Um, let's do the traditional quick look around the hotel room. <laughs> Tell me if this is utterly boring and I'll stop doing it. Um, but, one of the longest hotel rooms <laughs> that we come to. All the way down there is, uh, is quite a long way. Uh, I could actually skateboard along this room, that's how long it is. Normal stuff, great big bed, um, desk for doing a bit of work, uh, an interesting kind of um, sort of breakfast bar area here. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. Um, and, uh, and a kind of kitchenette. Again, let's try and put some lights on. And that completes the tour. too many wires and cables in my rucksack. I don't even know what half of them do. I carry these things around and every time anybody at the airport opens my bag for a security check, they're like, what on earth is going on in here? I've got batteries and cables and I mean, it's just, it's a mess. But there we go. Uh, this weekend, I've gone for a uh, slightly different luggage strategy. Um, <laughs> I have ditched the big suitcase uh, and tried to pack everything into the skateboard bag. So basically all of my clothes, all of my shoes, everything has been squeezed in around the skateboard, uh, which kind of just about fits, but it means I've had to travel quite light. So I've banked on the weather being pretty good because I didn't bring too many clothes with me. Um, right, well, that brings me on to what can we expect from the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Um, first of all, the weather uh, kind of looks, it's definitely cooler than it normally is. The race is a bit earlier in the year this time around. Normally we come in June and I, when I came here first time in 2016, it was scorching hot. I mean, seriously, seriously hot. Um, looking like it's going to be a bit cooler this time around. Um, sort of average temperatures, I think, is what it looks like. I mean, 19, 20, uh, 21 degrees, something like that. So pretty, uh, pretty kind of roughly in the middle, nothing that's too extreme in either direction. 
Um, the track uh, here is a really interesting one. I mean, you're never quite sure what you're going to get here because I think the first year we came, the race was was actually pretty dull. Last year, we had a few incidents, if you remember, that kind of spiced it all up. So not quite sure. It's, it's one of these circuits that probably, if you look at it on paper, isn't the most exciting track layout. Um, at the early part of the lap, lots of kind of right angle corners, almost like a Formula E track uh, in, in many respects. They do provide overtaking opportunities. You, you definitely, we've seen cars lunging up the inside into those right angle turns. So it's not that you can't overtake here. Absolutely, uh, that's not the case. Um, and then, of course, we've got this incredibly uh, tight section that goes past the, the medieval part of the town through the, the castle walls. I think just over seven metres wide at its narrowest point as they go through that section and quite fast through there as well, I guess, for, for the narrowness of the track. Uh, and then you've got that incredibly long uh, straight and it's not quite a straight. And I, I think if you go to the stats, this doesn't classify as being the longest straight because the first part of it is actually a huge bend. Um, definitely, this is the longest section on full throttle. And I think from memory, and please don't quote me on this, but I think it's something like 24 or 25 seconds of flat out full throttle uh, along that section of the racetrack. Um, obviously, huge strip sli uh, no, no, slip streaming potential along there. Um, it does mean that fuel consumption here is very high. Um, and again, I think from memory, the, the fuel consumption around here is pretty close to, to two kilos of fuel per lap, which is, which is very high. And with the, uh, the, the 105 kilo maximum of fuel capacity in these cars for the race, there's definitely going to be fuel saving. Um, without a safety car or some sort of incident like that, the teams will have to fuel save to get to the end of the race. And as I mentioned in a previous video, much as I don't like to, to, to hear on the radio and hear people having to fuel save, that does potentially offer up performance differentials between the cars, which can then lead on to opportunities for, for overtaking and different strategies. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, I don't think we're expecting any rain. Uh, the brakes, given the, the length of that straight, going into turn one, which I think is that way from here, um, going into turn one, um, the brakes are very, very cool because they've been going at flat out top speed for such a long period of time without any usage on the brakes that they're incredibly cold by the time they get to a really heavy stop at turn one. Um, quite common because of that to see guys, people locking up brakes, overshooting that turn one, uh, which is a really sort of right, almost right angled left hander. Um, and that, when people make mistakes, provides opportunity as well for, for others to capitalize. So there's plenty of opportunity around this racetrack. Um, downforce is obviously very low because of that, uh, that long, straight, flat out section. Um, it means that uh, the cars can be pretty skittish through the tighter, twistier section. Lots of slow corners around here. But if you don't, if you put downforce on for those slower corners, you know, half the track here is a bit Monaco-esque or Singapore-esque. Um, but that long straight determines what the engineers have to do with the cars. And if you put downforce on for the slower sections, you will just get left behind and swallowed up along that, that really long, fast section. So that's what determines the setup is the, the low downforce. I think other than Monza, this will be the lowest downforce track that we go to. It does mean, as I say, that through the tighter section, the cars where they really want all the downforce have very little uh, and therefore offer pretty low grip for those bits. And the, and the drivers then have to manage that around different sections of the lap. Um, so plenty of interest. Um, as I say, I think it's going to be a pretty potential, has the potential to be a pretty good race. And the way the season's gone for the first three races so far, you just wouldn't rule anything out, would you? Um I, I, I've absolutely loved the start of this season. I genuinely, I can't remember a season starting this well or this excitingly. I mean, for many years, I can't remember when we let, last had this much unpredictability. When did we last have unpredictability at this level in Formula One? That's the one word that I always look to any championship and particularly something I've craved in Formula One for such a long time. Something that Formula E has in abundance, unpredictability. 
and we've got it this year. We don't know who's going to come out on top. We don't know in uh, which circuit, which car uh, or which team are going to be quickest, which temperatures are going to favour each one yet. We're still working all of that out. Even the teams are still working that out. Mercedes went away from China uh, you know, and Bahrain for that double header trip confused as to where the performance of their car uh, you know where its strengths and weaknesses were so if they're confused you know we're all confused and that I have to say is great I love being confused and not knowing who's going to win um, so anyway that is looking ahead to the uh, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix I'm kind of really looking forward to it um, I will bring you more updates as the weekend goes on not quite sure of the frequency yet I just don't know because I don't know what uh, the workload will be over the week, what timings we might have, what the upload situation will be with the internet here. I hope it's better than in China. Um, so look, we'll see how it goes, but I will do my very best to bring you updates uh, across the weekend as we go. Let me know. Please do keep letting me know what you think and what you'd like me to perhaps explain. If there's anything technical you'd want uh, explaining um, <coughs> or talking about this weekend, drop me a line. I'll try and cover it. Right, have a great weekend and enjoy the weekend, enjoy the race, enjoy the, uh, the, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. See you soon.